you know, day by day, more people started hiring me for the same service. And that has been probably the majority of my income for the last bunch of years. So your social media Sherpa was born. Now I help people get clarity and accountability during their own marketing. I help their marketing be productive and help them understand how their business brain and knowledge connects to what they're going to do on the internet and how that's actually going to help them get more referrals and beyond. So that's me. Here I am. Most people that are probably listening to this are probably not going to be famous TikTokers for posting really silly dance videos. They're probably real people with real brains. They could be helpful to someone. And it needs to be what you say to people on a regular basis that needs to be communicated in some way. And if they can't get on the phone with everyone and spend three hours explaining their business, then that's a missed opportunity. But if your website can do all that education for you, that's going to make that phone call so much easier to get because people will already know what your deal is. And that's what I love to bridge for my clients. So good morning and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Shaili Hakiman, who is from Chicago over in the US. And she is the founder, or she likes to call herself the cheerleader, at YourSocialMediaSherpa.com. <laughs> and we just had a bit of a chat, as I always do before we come on the show. And this lady is just so full of energy and a lot of knowledge about how we can actually use social media to our advantage. So welcome to the show, Shaili. Thank you so much for having me. It's cool to be down under a little bit uh, virtually here today. And you're actually were a day ahead of you. So you're actually in the future right here, right now. <laughs> ah, I love it. Yeah. Love it. Now, we were just talking about sort of social media. And obviously, um, your, your story is a little bit different because you were a teacher when you first um, started out of college. Is that right? Yep. I studied yeah. education. So tell us a little bit about your journey to where you have got to today. Because my understanding is you started in education, then you got into doing social media, but now you actually teach social media. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. You nailed it. So that's, yeah, what were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want you to tell the story in, in your own words. How did you get to where you are now? So uh, unofficially, I started on MySpace doing social media for an online community that I founded for a bunch of nerds who love the shows Big Brother and Survivor. So I don't know if you oh bliss- yep. do you like their shows? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like them, but I certainly know of them. They're huge, of oh, course. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, so I, yeah, I started managing that. I didn't think much of it. Applied for a job after college or internship job, whatever it was, uh, to manage social media. And I'm Jewish in the Jewish community. So I was like, oh, Jewish social media doing good. I was like, and it was TED Talk related. I was like, this is amazing. Amazing. I love all of these things. And I wrote on my job, they were like, have you ever managed online communities? And I remembered, oh, MySpace, what I was doing was managing an online community of nerds. Uh, I'm going to vaguely add that to my cover letter and explain that I have done this before. And I got the position and that job led to other jobs doing more social media. Uh, but all of that while I was also subbing and teaching and doing all sorts of stuff. This is my early career. It was a little messy, right? As it should sure. be. Yeah. So I was trying to get more people to pay me for social media. And I was like, hey, hire me to do your social media. Hire me to do it. I want to like post for you and all that stuff let me tweet let me poke on facebook whatever and so i was i was promoting myself at a bni meeting where all the business networking people are in chicago and i said i want to do social media and people would not really bite on that maybe they weren't the right size clientele for the services i wanted to offer but one lady came up to me she's like hey shyly i don't want to pay you to do my social media and i was like no and then she's like but i do want to pay you and i was like go on uh (laughs) can you uh teach me how to do instagram and teach me how to do my own social media. And it was a light bulb moment because I had studied education in college and I love, love motivating people and cheering them on and encouraging them to be their best selves and all that kind of stuff. And I love working one-on-one. So I was like, yeah, of course I'll offer that service. And uh, I charged her a little bit of cash for it. She loved the service. I love doing it. And I was like, oh, okay, I might want to do more of this. And, you know, day by day, more people started hiring me for the same service. And that has been probably the majority of my income for the last bunch of years. So your social media Sherpa was born. Now I help people get clarity and accountability during their own marketing. I help their marketing be productive and help them understand how their business brain and knowledge connects to what they're going to do on the internet and how that's actually going to help them get more referrals and beyond. Hmm. So that's me. Here I am. (laughs) And I always ask my guests, what are you most proud of? So, you know, in your life so far, what are you proud of? Uh, I, I just love when people realize that they're capable of what they didn't think they were capable of. Like I love my clients who've been in their sixties and who are just killing it and not scared to try new things. And I just love watching them go from like, I don't know how this thing works to like, I'm actually excited about social media and I know that my energy is worth something. And that makes me feel 
really, really, really proud. The other fun thing, like I love the book Profit First and I got to go on Profit First podcast recently and I was like, oh, that's cool. Very fun professional win. Um, That was a cool thing. Uh, The other fun thing, I know sometimes you like to know about personal stuff. I love hosting people and I got real tired the last few years of hosting people in my home. And the last, uh, I don't know, six months, I've had a few parties and I'm like, yay, I love bringing people together in person and you know, the world is coming back. So those are a few things I'm proud of. I think we share some very common interests. Yes. Very, very, very big connector. Yeah. I love bringing people together. I love sort of looking for opportunities to go, hey, you need to talk to this person here. This is yes. really cool. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to talk yes. about social media today because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think but social media is just a place where you go out there and you kind of brag about what you're up to no. and you post lots of sales stuff and, and then they, they, want, they wonder, you know, why they're not getting any results. Or on the converse side, they're not mm-hmm. even sure what to post. And so they just sit back and go, I don't know what I'm going to post. So how do you see social media overall? Ooh, so the dumb, simple answer to this is that social media is a conversation at scale with people, ideally people you already know or have a relationship with, Mm -hmm. answering questions they didn't know they needed answers to. (laughs) Where do you get that information of what to post? What do people ask you on sales calls? What questions are constantly coming up? What things do people constantly not understand about what you do in your business? If you can make that information available to them through the information that you put out, through your website, through your emails, maybe text messages, whatever your medium is, that's going to make it easier for people to build that relationship and trust with you before they're ready to say, hey, Deborah, take all my money. Um, So that's a little snippet of how it all connects. And I think a lot of social media out there is like, oh, if you post really interesting stuff people will find you most people that are probably listening to this are probably not going to be famous tiktokers for posting really silly dance videos they're probably real people with real brains they can be helpful to someone and it needs to be what you say to people on a regular basis that needs to be communicated in some way and if they can't get on the phone with everyone and spend three hours explaining their business then that's a missed opportunity but if your website can do all that education for you that's going to make that phone call so much easier to get because people will already know what your deal is and that's what I love to bridge for my clients. <laughs> it's actually quite interesting. I remember yeah. a, a number of years ago, um, actually probably sort of 10, 15 years ago now, I actually had somebody do a video of me and, and who I was and why I existed and what, and what I loved about helping businesses. Oh. And, the, the, and the way that it was kind of sold was that actually if somebody actually watches that video, when they eventually do decide to connect with you, they feel like they already know you. Yes. Because they, they, even though they've never met you, they've got a sense of, I know who Deborah is. So it wasn't about mm-hmm. me going out there and wanting to talk about myself, but it was just they would give people the sense of this isn't a cold call this isn't a I'm approaching a complete stranger but there's somebody I already know and I think it was also designed to kind of get rid of the people who aren't your people because let's face it we do not appeal to everybody and that's perfectly okay Um, so it's actually a way to kind of filter Mm -hmm. through people and scare off the ones you don't want and attract the ones that you do and I think that has that was 10-15 years ago now social media plays a huge part in building that relationship with people would you say yes 100% it's look like I, you know, for me to see you and bump into you on the streets and just say, oh, hey, Deborah, it's been a while is impossible because we live on different sides of the world. Yeah. But now I can bump into you all the time when I see your stuff pop up on LinkedIn because we're connected. Right. And mm-hmm. and that makes more touch points than you could have. Uh, I remember I always use the example of like you go to the grocery store and you bump into a friend and you're like, oh, friend, like I haven't seen you in so long. I was just thinking about you. And then you catch up and then you think of, oh, you should go meet so and so. And then I have that moment. But like, Obviously, COVID didn't help with having more of those moments, but you can do that on the internet because when people add you or they follow you or they like you or whatever the pages that they're connected to, whenever you put stuff out, they might see it. And now they get to know you and have more conversations with you without you having to show up one on one on one on one on one with everybody. And that's what what's worked for business over bajillions of years. But now how are you going to stay in touch with Joe Schmo that you met two years ago that you haven't seen in so long? You're not going to bump into them randomly. But if, like me, you add them after a networking event to your LinkedIn, they will see your stuff potentially forever. And that's a great way to build context beyond that one meeting point, right? Like you said, it's building that relationship with them over time, just yeah. like it works in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strange that, hey? Because that's the thing. I mean, social yep. media is just another form of um, engaging, interacting yep. with other human beings. It's just like you would do at a networking event or any other um, any other exactly. life event, I suppose. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of our kind of listeners are probably a little bit more established. They might actually mm-hmm. have a marketing person or a marketing Love team who are doing their social Good. media, which is cool. But um, there is more to social media than just the company doing posting and doing things, isn't there? I mean, what what would you say to them who are maybe the owner of the business who's not actually necessarily doing much themselves, but just giving it to a team to, to do it for them? 
Oof. Well, my understanding, and I'm pretty sure people who are listening to this are in this boat where they're not actually giving their team the information they need to be as successful as possible. And right. maybe they're okay with just meh social media. There's plenty of people will do meh social media that'll check the box and it's good enough. But really great social media is getting the brain of that owner who knows everything about that company, everything about the products, everything about everything down on paper. Think like FAQs, orange. Oh, easy hack. This is one of my tips I want to share is have they told their story about why they started the business, how the business started, why they care, what they wanted to do different in their industry, right? That information is not going to come out of, you know, a creative person who's doing your social media. But Mm -hmm. if you give them that, they can make it more interesting and they can package it in a way that's going to resonate. So that's one of the biggest things that I'm seeing is that they don't know how to communicate that. And so what I love to do is I love coming in to a company where they have a social media person or they have an assistant or maybe an agency too. And I bridge those worlds together because every single one of these types of service providers has an agenda and they're like dead focused on it. But if you don't know how to communicate what you need out of them, you don't always get what you want or you don't get as much as you want out of it. So the more you can tell that story of the leadership or the person that people usually often connect with, the easier it is for other people who haven't had that opportunity to get you and your company and why it's so special. Hmm. Love it. Okay, that's really cool. So what do you think is the biggest mistake that people make around social media? Oh, well, I'm going to pull something you said earlier, right? Like people don't know what to post. And uh, a lot of my clients will start posting like kind of salesy, like, hey, I'm taking bookings for this year. (laughs) Or, you know, hire me for this. Or like, oh, you know, here's my new package offering. And it's like, people don't care. They don't care what you're offering. They don't know what your deal is. And they're posting information that's like, oh, I won an award. I'm like, I don't even know what that award is. Do I care? And like, (laughs) yes, it'll pop up and you'll see their face and it's fine. But that's not helpful. So I think that's one of the big mistakes I see. And a lot of people don't get that. It's just like, what smart things do you say on a regular basis? Can you just like write them down and put them out there? Because like we said, they don't get to see you in person. If there's a tip or there's a story, is there a past client that you can tell a story about how you transform them that can give an idea to someone who's watching you that may not be ready to buy from you this year, right? There's all of this stuff that you are probably naturally putting out this content in person Mm -hmm. that you could be just putting out online for more people to see. And I think people don't realize how much they already know what they need to be saying. They just don't know to validate that as social media content. Yeah. And I think you're right. I always used to, um, I used to, I actually still do. I, I work at the university over here in Auckland and I actually teach oh, cool. the students about networking. And yes. I say to them, you know, when you go networking, you don't just walk up to somebody and go, hi, my name is Deborah. I'm a business coach. Mm-hmm. I do blah, 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 blah. You wouldn't do that to a complete stranger. You shouldn't do it on networking. You shouldn't do it on social media either. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you actually have to build some rapport first. You actually have to yep. get to know the person. Um, you have to add value to them. I mean, the question you should be asking all the time is what can I do to help them and what value can I add to them? And when mm-hmm. I Sort of say this to the to the students. They're always like, "Oh, I hadn't even thought of that," because they they've got it in their mind. They're there to meet people, collect cards, get their details, and and that's really not what networking in my, in my mind is about. No, but here's a hack to that, right? Because I yeah. love networking. I've always like I'm a network queen. Like people know I'm a connector, like you, right? Yeah. And so what I will do is I'll add somebody on LinkedIn while I'm at the event because I'm a nerd like that. It could be weird. It might not be for everybody. <laughs> and I'll look at their profile first of all. Look, who are mutual connections? And sometimes it's yeah. like really smart people. And I was like, oh, you must be really important if you know these five people in my network I don't know sometimes I'm weird like that and then I also find out what we have in common really quick and I know what their deal is but also when they look at my profile my profile explains exactly what I do right so if I can't get everything out in my little conversation they have a chance to look at what I do online and same for your students right like Mm. it's a free interview essentially for either a job or for a business project or for a gig or anything yep (coughs) excuse me my cough is like killing me (laughs) everyone's getting sick winter over here so enjoy your beautiful summer that i know you're experiencing uh, so, it's a bit, bit wet and miserable over here at the moment, so we're not getting a great summer. Oh, no. but it, uh, yeah. So, I'll tell you what, just talking about tips and hacks and things, one of the things that I actually think is really handy too, yeah, when you do connect with somebody, you know how you get the the chance to actually add a note? I always put in that note where we met. So it was really great to meet yes! you today at this place or through this great person. Hack. Because, of course, with LinkedIn, that's there forever. So if I ever go back and go, where on earth mm-hmm. did I meet this person? Ah, yep. look, first message, woohoo, we met at this networking event. 
And, and that yes. saved my butt a million times because I forget too. things very quickly. <laughs> yes. And I do that for my social life too on Facebook all the time. All right. Yeah. So you can use, that is the best hack. Cause like, especially if you don't have a CR, well, I'm sure your people already have a CRM, but it's like almost Not like necessarily. a pseudo CRM. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily. Okay, great. Use that as a CRM. Like, Hey, here's what we met. Here's what we talked about. And this is great because now if you ever want to reach out to them or if they ever reach out to you, you're no yep. longer a stranger. You're somebody who has contacts and history with them. Mm, um, yeah. Speaking of hacks and trip uh, tips and stuff, one of the other mistakes I see that isn't really the most intuitive, and it took me a long time to understand, uh, I'd call it, I guess, the Shiley-ism, the quote that I, I say is, bring the juice to the top. So make the first thing that shows up like the juiciest thing. I think, yep. what is it? Like, p- people in writing or people who used to work in newspapers say, don't bury the lead. Like, it works mm-hmm. here, too. So I always say, like, Like, you know, if you watch a TV show, they always have like a preview of like, come after the commercials, we'll find out. Are they going to fall in love? And is it going to be great? (laughs) Who's going to get murdered? Right? You want to hook you to come back. And if the first few lines of your, you know, show or your tweet or whatever are not interesting, I don't want to keep reading, right? And especially like on LinkedIn, if they don't Mm -hmm. click that see more button... They're yeah. not going to see that the most amazing thing that maybe you had later in the content. So it doesn't with video, it works with audio, everything like tell people what's inside. Um, yep. Don't hide it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely true. I mean, we actually use snippets to promote this podcast, right? And those Boom. little snippets, are little hooks that go, hey, this is, sounds really interesting. Let's get into it. But for some people, it's not natural to write. So yeah, I hate it. Our, <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, we're all very happy talking to people. But if you're not a natural writer, um, there could be a fear of going on to say, well, like, what am I going to say? How am I going to, you know, what am I going to do on social media? What would you say mm. to that? So this is what I also, I think is really fun about how I operate is that there's not like one way that every one of my clients does social media. Mm-hmm. I find a combination of what they're good at. So like, for example, I love doing podcasts. So this is why I do more podcasts than I do writing. Cause I hate writing. You find the <laughs> thing that they like, they're yep. more capable of doing whether it's short form, long form writing, tweets, audio rooms, whatever. And then in combination to where their people are and yeah. ideally something that they can do consistently. So if they can make one video every two weeks, deal. If they can make one email every week, deal, whatever that is. So when we find that killer combination, it becomes less work than they realized. The mm-hmm. content's much better quality and it's consistent and it's in a format that they don't hate because I always was like editing my LinkedIn posts that were text-based for so long. And I absolutely, again, I hate writing so much. <laughs> I'm like, now yeah. I have a virtual assistant in the UK yeah. actually, who was helping me with oh. writing. And I'm like, Oh, miracles. Um, <laughs> and that's but, another yeah. little tip, isn't it? Like you don't, if you don't enjoy writing, get somebody to interview you, get them oh, to I ask you all that. the questions and then you can just get them to sort of transcribe it and they can use that to start doing your yes. post for you. I yeah. love that. But it's, right, it's exactly it. Like, uh, you know, do, but do the things that work for you. Right. When I figured yeah. out how to not take 15 hours to edit my old LinkedIn content and instead take an hour to do a whole video post, like it yeah. saved so much time. I got rid of all my perfectionism, which also a big issue, I think, um, <laughs> yes. especially for women, but, um, I got, and I made it a lot easier. Now I like, I have an easier way of producing content that I don't hate. That's giving people the information. It's not about how perfect every edit is. It's about giving people insights they didn't know they had access to from your information and content. It doesn't have to be perfect. But no, I just, and it's insight. really interesting. I, I mean, I, I was an early adopter of social media, if I'm honest. Um, so it's it's always been something I'm quite passionate about. But it is interesting that some of the the real kind of, you know, just off the cuff videos that you put out there that you look at it. And, and as a woman, you look at yourself and go, oh, my goodness, look at my double chin. Look how terrible I look. And I'm talking too fast. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But they're often <laughs> the best because they're just you. And at the mm-hmm. end of the day, people are going to do business with you. They don't want the mm-hmm. polished version. They don't want the, they want to actually know who you really are. Yeah, uh, which is why we also don't edit our podcast. So um, we Ooh. literally just record them live, and they go out there. Well, we might take your coughs out, whatever. But but apart from that, we just yeah. let it go because um, sometimes you kind of get a bit tongue tied. But nevertheless, it's a natural flowing conversation. It's who we are. I love that. Right. Yeah. I love that permission though you gave yourself. Right. Like if you were like some massive super celebrity with 300 million followers or something, maybe then you need all the edits and all the perfection, all the BS. But it's like, I think what else is happening is I think a lot of people get knowledge about social media and marketing for kinds of companies that aren't the level that they're at. If you have somebody who works at Coca-Cola giving tips to your 200 person company clients, Mm. right? That's not going to be relevant for them, but there's plenty of people who will do that. I'm going to work for Coca-Cola, have me for your marketing. They don't know what that day to day, like life is like for those people. And I think that's the other, uh, the thing I want your people to be really cognizant about is that who's giving this information? Is it for your demographic? Because yep. 
that's it's right for somebody else, but they're not there yet. And they shouldn't spend their time and energy worrying about every little detail. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, obviously, you know, I love LinkedIn, but there's a lot more social media out there now. And, and I think, I mean, I used to teach digital marketing way, way back um, mm. with Marketing Association here in New Zealand. Ooh. And I would always say that actually, the first thing you need to do is establish who your target market is. You don't Ooh. need to be on every single social media, you don't need to be doing everything, Mm-mm. but actually, who is your audience? And where are they most likely to want to consume this kind of information? And I don't think that has changed, but we still get this pressure, you know, you need to be on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mm. LinkedIn. What do you think? (laughs) So I think if you're starting from zero, I can see how finding the target audience and kind of researching where they are is a good move. I skip all of that in my work Ah. with people. I know, weird. So my people, like you and me, are connectors. They're people that have a network that loves and trusts them. A lot of times if you're starting from zero, that's it's hard to like say do this and get followers, right? The best starting point for them before they're trying to find random people from the sky to fall and become their clients is and I and I ask this to my leads all the time like how are you currently staying in touch with your referral network and they look at me and they're like oh I can be better because a lot of times that's how they get their business word of mouth and they're Mm -hmm. not staying in touch with it so my whole strategy and this is literally anybody can do this from listening to the show is you get see where those people are maybe you have their email already maybe they have their phone numbers maybe they're already a lot of my clients they already have these people on their LinkedIn profile already like they're already followers Mm -hmm. right And then you need to put stuff out consistently in front of their faces because they're the ones who've given you past clients. They're the ones who can illuminate and realize, oh, I need Deborah again. She needs to do more training for us. That's really the secret because once you already have that audience, you already are an influencer. It's just not as obvious on social media that you're an influencer. You're an influencer in real life. But people don't bridge those two worlds. They don't realize that it's one and the same. And that's why I kind of skip that step because they know their people already. And sometimes it's just clearly articulating to the people that already know and love you and reminding them what you do because they might have forgotten if they haven't seen you in six months and that's the magic of social media is that you pop up in front of their faces on a regular basis so when joe schmo is like oh i need an eos trainer oh yeah deborah's great because she popped up on my linkedin this week yeah, top of mind is actually one of the key things. I mean, I'm, a tradi- I'm a traditional marketer um, from way back. And so like, we always talk about how do you stay top of mind, particularly for purchases where it's not an every day or an every week purchase. It's when they're ready for it. And so actually, and I remember, I'll never forget, I actually had a person just recently who I sent out a book to back in March 2020. And I never heard anything from her, but we were connected Ooh. on LinkedIn. Two year, two and a bit years on the track, probably almost two and a mm-hmm. half years, I suddenly get um, a a, a phone call out of the blue sort of saying, hey, um, I, I know that you sent me a, a book, you know, back in March 2020. Uh, we're ready to do EOS now. Could we have a chat? And I sat there and I went, in two and a half years, I've heard nothing from you. You've never commented. You've never mm-hmm. um, done Lurkers. anything on any of my stuff, but she's there watching. And I think that's what we forget because we get we get caught up in the whole, how many likes mm. did I have? How many people no. commented on our post? It doesn't actually really matter in no. some respects. It's like, it's just being that top of mind and consistency. I think that mm-hmm. is the other thing is that um, a lot of people, they start it, they don't see the results that they kind of expect from it, and so then they stop. And they stop and they start and they stop and they start. The one thing I think I've been really good at is consistency. (laughs) I mean, that's huge. That's literally it. Like, the best example – oh, my gosh, my face. The best example I have of this is think of, like, any TV show out there. I think I even made a post about this, like, Game of Thrones. Like, people were crazy about this Game of Thrones shenanigans. I didn't watch it, but whatever. They were, like, obsessed. But if Game of Thrones said, like, oh, there's 10 episodes in every season, we're going to make the first four – and then we just got busy and we just like don't feel like releasing the next <laughs> eight episodes or six episodes. Yep. And like people would be really mad. And like, yep. I, you know, maybe we're normal people and maybe there aren't that many people obsessed with us. But like people are looking forward to seeing your stuff. And when you don't pop up, it's like the relationship is kind of broken a little bit. So yeah. I think a lot of and people. They'll, and they'll replace you with somebody else, right? I mean, it's like if, they could. if Game of Thrones didn't have another episode come out, we'd go and find something else to watch. Exactly. On and it happened yeah. to one of my shows that I was watching. It was a web series like 10 years ago. And I was so sad. And then they came up with episodes a while later. And I was like really bummed about it. Because I was like, oh, I thought this was coming out in a month. And it's like, nope. And it lost my enthusiasm and it lost my engagement. Mm. Yeah. If they don't have my email address, I'm never going to see that show again. So. Mm-hmm. What I tell people to do, and this is, I think, different than what other social media, like, oh my gosh, social media coach, oh my gosh, I'm stuck, like all those people say. <laughs> yep. Like they used to say, like, you have to post, you know, three TikToks a day and you have to post, you know, three pictures on Instagram every week or whatever it was. It changes all the time. Magic. Yep. My, right. And then they tell you to do that. I'm like, that might not be wrong for the platform, but if m- the people who are listening to this are doing it themselves or maybe they have a team member, 
that might not actually be in the capacity of the team to execute on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, it sounds so gross, but it's life. <laughs> Here we are. Entrepreneurs who work hard through the coughs. Okay. So that's really what I, I tell my folks is find something that you can stick with because a lot of times they will not be consistent because they're taking on too much too soon. Yeah. And one so client you- that did the same thing. Tw- she's 23 years old. 24. She's 23 when I started working with her. I was like, oh, she's Gen Z. She should know this stuff. Or she has a friend who's a TikTok influencer. Got her convinced to go on TikTok and do stuff, right? So she's like, every day she's posting on TikTok a new video. So I'm watching her and I'm like, yeah, good job. Keep going. You're doing great. But I told her, you're going to hate this in a few weeks because you're not going to be able to stick with it like a crash diet. Mm -hmm. And as much as I believe in her and I know she's going to be rocking it for the rest of her career, I was right because you don't want to crash diet social media. So tell her find something you can stick with. And for her, it was actually her network was on LinkedIn for her writing a nice, beautiful LinkedIn post every other week or so that's written was actually yeah. jackpot for her. And that was much more up her, her vibe because she liked writing and she's less hmm. of a video person. So it's about finding anything that works for them. And it's kind of like doing what you love, you know. If, if, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're going to be less likely to do it. And like you said, you, you can set yourself up for failure. Because if you really, you know, if you can't, do, I mean, I do a newsletter every week and I do one or two podcasts every Get single it. week without fail. Um, but I, I love doing it. So for me, it's actually, it's something I yes. really, really enjoy. And so I, it's easy for me to do. But it's still quite a bit of work. And, and for some people, that might be too much. And that's okay. Like It's like, how many hours do you like to work in a week? I always have this conversation with people. There's no right or wrong answer. I personally love doing 55 hour weeks that works for me but 70 no thank you and if I was doing 20 I'd be bored so it's like you know there's, there's that's my right number but for other people yes. 20 might be perfect and for other people they don't mind working 80 hours I think they're crazy but you know <laughs> no, don't do it <laughs> yeah 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 but so it's, it is. it's about so it's about what yeah. actually works for you do you enjoy yes. doing it and is it the right so as you said I love that analogy don't um, binge diet <laughs> no because it's that doesn't work doesn't yep. work. Uh, it doesn't work for anything in life. But that's mm. why, like, you know, for me, like, I didn't have a newsletter when I started, but like, I, I slowly started building it up a few years ago. And now yep. it's kind of almost automated. It kind of runs on its own, but it's still very personalized and lovely. If yep. you want tips, by the way, it's on there. But it <laughs> took me a long yet. time to build up to it. it took me like six months to build it. And now it's in motion, right? But the benefit, mm-hmm. I get the benefit of the work that I set up years ago, right? And I don't have to create brand new content for every single email. I think a lot of that content already exists in my world and just needs a little bit of tweaking and yeah. it's still valuable to whoever's on my list now. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of ways to loosen the pain of social yeah. media. And you, as you said, you don't have to do it all yourself. And it's like no. people sort of say, oh, if you're not posting yourself, it's not authentic. Well, mm. it depends on how it's done. I mean, the people who post for me, um, they've spent a lot of time talking to me, interviewing, getting to know me. I've told them what's important for me to share and what I want to cover. Uh, with my VA over in the Philippines, every week I say to her, these are the things. And I, and I feed her stuff as I come across it and go, we want to talk about this. So I give her direction so that she can then Ooh. be like me in terms of, you know, giving, so taking out the content. So you don't have to do everything yourself. I do write no. my own newsletters and I do actually do my own podcast, Ooh. obviously. <laughs> yeah. Get it. You don't you don't yeah. have to do it all on your own, right? Like for me, yeah. I make the videos and I give it to my VA and she writes me a little blurb. And I hate writing the blurbs. And I'm like, she can write the blurbs yeah. for me. That means my brain could like relax. Do the stuff for... you love. Yeah. No, right? I'm like, oh, this is this is 2023. We're getting rid of writing for yeah. my life. Uh it's funny. Now they're all all the people listening, like, she hates right. I'm like, you know what? I love doing this, right? One on one, talking to people yeah. like you who's lovingly hosting on your show or my clients. It's fun. This is my strength. I think that's the best thing about having my own business is that I'm building where I spend my time around the things that I'm good at. And mm-hmm. you know, even I have to do some, you know, we all have to do stuff that's annoying to us too. But I think that's what's so great about it is I can only get better and better at the things that I rock at. And I think and that just makes us all shine better, right? We're yeah, exactly absolutely. where we need to be. <laughs> cool. So tell us, um, I always ask our guests to give us the top three tips. What are the top three things that you've learned, either professionally or personally in your world, that Ooh. you really think have actually changed your life or changed the way you do something? Ooh, well, you added the in life. I was like, oh gosh, mm. in life. Uh, well, okay, random social media ones, right? Bring the juice to the top. That's a good one. Consistency, mm, yeah. easy, good one. Um three is bridge your brain to your marketer's brain and if you need help doing that hi hello shyly here to help <laughs> um conflict resolution for social media except for there usually isn't conflict but that's how i fr- come to it whatever um those are some three interesting quick nuggets the other things i would say are about life oof uh oh man here's what i would say 
Um, don't my favorite thing to say to people, it's totally left field, but is don't deprive the world of what makes you special mm. because yeah, every one of us has a unique combination of skills that nobody else will have. And you know, there's, there's a, nobody will have the same lens of the world that we do, right? If someone, I, I'm never good at this, like, how do I bridge these things, right? If somebody knows about baking in cars, maybe there's a hybrid there. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> knows about, I'm just making it, but there's better examples of this, right? Yep. Um, comedy. Okay. Like here's one, like a drag queen who does magic, right? Like that's mm. super specific. As somebody who's done magic in my life. I'm like, that's cool. Right. That's very specific. And nobody will have that. And I don't, I want more people to share that wonderfulness with the world or with their people, because that's, what's going to fix the messes of our world is that nobody will, the more of these layers that we understand, the better we can do for the world. Just like me with teaching and social media. Right. So uh, that's something I'm really, really passionate about. Uh, Just something to make the world a little bit better. Uh, I can talk about happiness hacks. That's like a really random thing. I don't know if you want to hear all those shenanigans there, but I have some hacks there. Oh yeah, go on. So here's another tip. Before you so, do though, let me just, I just want to quickly share something as well. So Gina, Wick, Gina Wickman, who actually wrote the EOS, um, the Entrepreneur Operating yeah. System, he actually always says, um, fr- "Fly your freak flag." Like, just go out there and fly your freak flag. Do it. And I think that's what you're saying. It's like, actually, don't don't be ashamed of who you are. Just go out there and be absolutely 100 percent you. Otherwise, it's too exhausting trying to be somebody else. <laughs> mm, I love that. Mm. And you know what? Yeah. As you say that, like, I have to keep telling myself that every day. Uh, because I am, I have my own fears, right? But I, people think, oh, Shelly, you're so open, but there's things I've hidden in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I love, I love how you phrased that. That's amazing. Uh, the last thing was like, like, you happiness, know, hacks, yeah. happiness <laughs> hacking is especially like, I know I'm proud of my generation millennials. We love talking about mental health and getting therapy and stuff. Always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, one of the things that I do in between that kind of mental health support uh, is I collect anything nice that someone has said about me from like compliments on social media to like DMs about watching my videos and being like, Oh, you've helped me figure something out or whatever. Like, Charlie, thank you for introducing me to these friends, inviting me to a party, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I save them in a folder. So whenever I'm having a rainy day where I'm sad or upset or don't have anyone to cry to, which doesn't happen that often, but very occasionally I'll open that slideshow and read it. And it'll just be loving messages coming to me when I didn't know I needed it the most. And there's lots of ways to do it with postcards or letters people have written, all that kind of stuff. And so that's something that keeps me moving and grooving because I know that what I'm doing is so important and I need to keep going because for entrepreneurs, like there's a lot of yeah. moments where we want to quit and like do something else. Yeah. So uh, that's how I, I keep myself that. moving. Yeah. Actually, we had something similar in our office. So my assistant and I, we used to have a jar where every time something good happened, we oh, just write on a yes. post-it note into the jar. And then at the end, when we were having those down moments, we just pull something back out again. It's like, ah, oh, that's right. That's why we're here. That's what we're here to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Trick yourself with joy, I yeah. guess, in a way, with reminders Beautiful. of the possibilities. And I love yeah. that. I love it too. Cool. Hey, look, I'm, I'm sure we could talk forever and ever in a day, ever but I'm ever. conscious of your of your cough as well and not making <laughs> you any worse. <laughs> so before we kind of wrap it up, just just let um, tell me first of all, what does your ideal client look like? Who do you Ooh. love working with? Ooh, who do I love working with? Well, I love working with people who are determined to make things happen. Like my people are not sleepers that are just like, oh, somebody just go do help learn the social media thing on the site. It's like people who are doers who get stuff done who have built something amazing off of a really powerful network. They're connectors. Mm -hmm. They're people that have, they're very, very confident that they know that there's more money to be had in their network that they're not tapping into. And they're already trying social media, but just haven't gotten it yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're people with the unique stories. Like we said, the, the, the freak, freak flag, right? Like I love that. Uh, Right now I I did some math and it's a lot of Jewish men over 35 who have their own (laughs) companies of sorts, whether it's their own nonprofit, their own passion project or their own, company that they've run for a long time. They're established. Uh, Sometimes they have a team. Sometimes they don't have a team. Sometimes they are 17 people. Sometimes it's less. Sometimes it's more, whatever. Uh, And sometimes it's uh, organizations that need to help with their uh, online event presence and stuff like that. So there's a lot of bridging between events and social media that I love to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a little taste of it. Um, But also... The other taste, too, and I don't talk about this enough, is uh, schools and institutions where there's young women, especially, who don't know how to talk about what makes them special on LinkedIn and beyond, honestly. And it's the same things I teach my business clients is how you talk about what you do. How do you put yourself out there in a way that feels authentic 
and nice and beautiful. So those, those are a little taste of my people. Yeah. And uh, they're they're badasses. Can I say badasses? <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Absolutely. And I believe on your site, so your website is www.yoursocialmediasherpa.com, but you've also got online courses, right? Is that right? Is that what you said earlier on today? Um, kind of. Some, some uh, videos, yeah? Oh, yeah. So, okay. So I have a video series. I used yes, to sell little one. ones, but I wasn't my, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a volume business. I like my handful of clients that I get to really dive deep into, but yeah. I do have a video series that is totally public that helps you count on where your next client is coming from through the efforts of the internet. And it's not platform dependent. So it could really apply to so many different kinds of businesses, even businesses that don't use the internet at all. They might not even have to, they can like my strategies can be applied to postcards. And I think that's so funny. So it's five videos. It's 25 minutes. It's public on my YouTube channel. I think it is available as a course on my website. Just it's it's a gift. It's like a free thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And uh, it's adorable. And it's, I put a lot of love into it and somebody can take that. Any of your people listening can take that and like, hand it off to their team and then have a new wave of inspiration for whatever it is they're doing. And that brings me joy. So. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your love and your, your, your yeah. passion. Um, so if people want to get in contact with you, obviously I've given the website, how else would you suggest they get in contact with you, Uh, your social media com. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And LinkedIn, you look up my name on LinkedIn and you will see, actually, that's a really great place to be. That's where I post all sorts of tips and tricks every week. Super yep. light, super easy. Nothing is crazy hard to understand and I think that's what people really love about it is it's very accessible to all sorts of different people and Mm -hmm. I love that so your social media sherpa.com Shiley Hakinian all over the web and uh it'll be a great time Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us your time. I do hope Same. that you um, get a bit better soon. That cough is sounding like a little bit terrible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, it, what, what's the temperature over there at the moment? It's like 30s maybe, but also I just got back from Miami like like in the middle of the night last night. So oh. very different. It was like 80 degrees there, which is <laughs> nice. I don't know what that is yep. in, in Celsius. Chicago is... I'm like, how do I use my Apple Watch to find the weather? Stop <laughs> it! I do... App- Apple Watch, another hack. I love my Apple Watch so much. Yep. It's 31 degrees, which is, I don't know what that is, Celsius. No, but, neither uh, do I. But we'll work it out. Anyway, that's all good. Well, look, hey, thank you for coming on the show, especially given you've had a, a late night and you're not feeling so great. Really appreciate oh, everything so you've done. About this. We are going to be obviously friends for a long, long time. So I should look forward to bumping into you on social media. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully sometime soon we'll actually get to meet in person as well. Goals. You know, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I spent three months in Australia. So I didn't get to see New Zealand, but I did get to spend oh. a lot of time down under and it was a joy. And so... My Australian people are coming. Oh, my Australian host family is coming to Chicago in a few weeks. So I get to have a little taste of down under shortly. So maybe one day I'll end up in New Zealand, but who knows? Uh, Just just, just for the record, I've lived in Australia for 10 years as well. And I'm actually an Australian citizen, a British citizen and a New Zealand citizen. That's what I saw. I saw that. I was like, (laughs) she's been everywhere. New Zealand is the best. Oh, me. it's hardcore Kiwi, I see. You must come and have a look. Yeah, it's an amazing place. Absolutely amazing. I've heard. Hey, well, look, yeah, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you so much for thank your you, time. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you too. I look forward to keeping in contact. Stay fabulous. Mwah. You too. Mwah. See you, Charlie. See you.